this afternoon, I want us to have a small little conversation around the issue of uh, COVID-19 and uh, freedom and uh, the power of uh, a state, the power of uh, judiciary, the power of the pharmaceutical companies, the power of uh, the instruments of state inclusive to that, the judiciary system and the policing uh, system and uh, ultimately the power also of the business economies and education. It's, it's a whole a whole bouquet uh, put together. I just want to share my thoughts with you in, in line with uh, the politics of the day, in line with uh, the pandemic that we have on our hands and uh, how as Africans uh, must we be thinking. I need to begin off by telling all of us, particularly us as African people or our Keblam nation, that we have invested and vested too much of our trust in systems, uh, systems of political governance, systems of medical, medical expectations, inclusive to that is of course this vaccination and many other pandemics, measles and etc. And we hope and think and believe that the governments and the pharmaceutical companies and the education system they are all intertwined because uh, some of us uh, we had to be vaccinated for for measles and etc so that we go to school if you did not have the vaccine you would not be allowed to go into class so it's amazing how the department of uh, health and the department of education together with the companies the pharmaceutical companies all come together and and target themselves into a community and manage the entire community through very subtle methods I mean, the issue of vaccination is not new to us today, as of today. We we already having the, what call this, um, yellow fever vaccines that have been, you know, in, in circulation for some time. So by the time another kind of a vaccine is coming into space, it is difficult for people to start arguing now about vaccination or not vaccinating, because we've already been vaccinated over other problems. And, and I wonder what makes it very different between all the other vaccinations that we have received and this particular coronavirus uh, vaccination. And I'm not even sure if we'll be able to finish up this uh, video uh, if it is not pulled down or it is not thrown away. But hey, we are here. If they want to kill us, well, let's just die once and get rid of this thing of keeping quiet for the sake of being politically correct. Let's go together. And I think that as African people, we have taken lots for granted, lots for granted. We sit around, and I shared this with you the other time, that when you are establishing a government, when you are building a political system, or building a, what they might call a state, a sovereign state, unlike some countries in Africa here, including South Africa, you cannot claim to be a sovereign state when you are registered as a private business in New York Stock Exchange. But that's a discussion for another day. When you are designing a, a, a state, when you are designing a political system, Firstly, you start off by establishing the businesses. I'll start again just to revise so that some of you who have missed me in the past, you can catch up with me. You first of all, establish a business. And with the business, you generate money. You generate financial means. You generate income. You generate the means of transaction, which is the money. And after you establish the money, uh, these businesses can include the agro-businesses, industrial businesses, retail businesses, manufacturing businesses, pharmaceutical businesses, clothing businesses, you know, industries, car manufacturing, go on and on and on. That you will have established, then they are the ones who are paying the tax, paying the tax to the, to the government. And whatever you call the government is a group of politicians. So it's easy that after you have established businesses, when you have the money for the business, you go ahead and you buy the politicians. You buy the politicians. All politicians are prostitutes. They go to the highest bidder. The question is who has the money to take her out tonight? So all our political systems are actually uh, politically captured. State capture does not happen when you are in power. State capture happens before you get into power. The one who gives you money to get and run an office is the one who gives you the agenda of what and how and when you must do when you get into power. So establish businesses with your businesses by the political system. 
by the political system. The political machinery is up for sale to the one who has money. Your enemy, number one, is not the politician that you have in your office. Your eminent enemy, number one, is the one who gives your politicians money to say and to do, to act, to sign the things that they want protected in their businesses. So from the business, you move over into the politicians. There's no political party that is totally free from business influence. For the businesses, lobby political leaders. The one they want to be in power is the one they're going to give money to. And once the politicians are in place, politicians are not there to protect the people. Politicians are there to protect their funders. They are there to protect their income. They are there to protect their sponsors. They are there to protect their investors. They are there to protect their partners. In some certain cases, the business people themselves position themselves as political heads, already having business interests. This has happened, for example, in a country like South Africa already, where you have a businessman, fully-fledged businessman. In countries like America, where you have a businessman, fully-fledged Donald Trump. And if from that business corner, they want more power, so they change lanes from business into politics. And when they get into politics, are they coming to politics to look after the people, or they are coming into politics to look after their interests, which are business interests? The question is, how are they going to manipulate the political office to protect their business economic policies? And with the political instruments in their hands, they are able to appoint a judiciary system. A judiciary system, therefore, stands to enact, to effect laws, laws that manage the politics, laws that manage the funders. And take note that the judiciary system, in as much as they tell us that it is independent from the political machinery, but a judiciary institution is actually appointed by the political system. It is the politics of the day that appoints judges, that appoints chief justices, that appoints prosecutors. It is the politicians who actually are employers of the judiciary system. So the judicial system is not independent from the adulterated funding that is coming from the business community and the confused decisions that are coming from politicians. Because of politicians, then you have the judicial system. Then the judiciary system, on top of it, you now have what you call propaganda, media, and education. In media and education, then you begin to teach the people and tell them what you want them to think, how you want them to think, the education you think they must have. Perceptions are controlled by education and media. But this media is governed by judiciary system. The judiciary system is governed by the political system. The political system is sponsored by the business community. Having mentioned those four typical culprits, which are actually managing everything, banks and all of them belong to the first platform. That is the business environment. If with that understanding as your introduction in mind, now let's move over into our African politics. Now that you know where I'm coming from, understanding how the political system is standing. Now let's go together slowly. When you begin to come to moments of pandemics, you want to understand again these three platforms. Are we dealing with a pandemic in terms of its economy? What does this, how does this pandemic affect the economy? What investments are needed in this pandemic? Which businesses stand to benefit from this pandemic? Which businesses stand to lose from this pandemic? And in these businesses, who has power to influence the running of the country managing the pandemic itself? So level number one, there's what I might want to call the business, the economics of a pandemic. Because in this pandemic, millionaires and billionaires have been born from selling Things, masks, sanitizers, testing kits, and those in essential services, cleaning up offices, sanitizing offices, and the rest of it. And those who are in the internet, 
and media, the Zoom owners. I want to know who owns Zoom. Now you are there discussing your business. No, we are no longer going to the office. We are now Zooming our meetings. Where are the servers of the Zoom meetings? While you are busy Zooming your ideas, big boys are listening to your conversations, listening to your strategies, planning for you ahead of schedule. Now they know what people in South Africa are talking about, what people in Uganda are talking about. You are able to actually synchronize world business in a day and say, these are the agendas. This is the agenda of the African continent being managed by an internet-based platform. So these businesses that are beginning to mushroom up now, including both Facebook, including both WhatsApp, including both Twitters, including both Zoom, both Stream Live, Be Live, and the rest of them. The question is, how do they stand to benefit from this business? So there is, and what I want, what I want to term, the economics, the economics of the pandemic. And you need to think, what are the economic implications, short term, medium term, and long term of the pandemic? Without sounding an alarm, I heard from a reliable source, those vaccines, for example, are costing 4,000, 4,200, 4,800, depending which one you are having. And you'll need four of them. So the first one for the first wave of corona that came in apparently, now South Africa is a different wave of, uh, of corona. The question is how do you use a vaccine for the first wave to treat the second wave? And we also hear there's a third wave and the fourth wave that is coming. Are all these vaccines already in place? It's a question I'm asking. And while I'm there, many other professional people come and inbox me behind my back. Hey, stop talking what you don't know. Stop talking what you don't. I don't have a problem talking what I don't know. I'm a civilian and I'm a national of Africa. You who have information, please start sending correct videos, sending correct documents so that we, the lay people, like myself, the stupid lay people who speak what they don't know, can also understand what is happening. You said Corona is one Corona throughout Africa, throughout the world. Now there's a difference between the corona in South Africa, the corona in Zimbabwe, the corona in China, and the corona where where, and all these various coronas, but they all have one vaccine. And now these different coronas are coming with different vaccines. The question is, how are we beginning to respond to this variety of manifestations of the same virus, yet we say we're using one vaccination? That's the question. Is there a business idea that is being spoken in the background? So we need firstly to discuss the economics of the pandemic. Number two, we need to discuss the politics of the pandemic. What are the political issues that are surrounding this coronavirus and COVID-19? Politically speaking, how is it affecting the continent? How is it affecting the rest of the world? Is it possible that political heads and political figures, both local, regional, continental, and international, have an interest in the direction in which the politics of the world will be governed and managed. Is it possible that through the corona pandemic, governments will now have more access to power and using instruments of state to manage the people? It's a question. It's not an answer. It's a question. Is there politics in the pandemic that we need to be hearing about? So number one, the economics of the pandemic. Number two, the politics of the pandemic. Right now, I hear in other countries, elections will be postponed. I heard some rumors, South Africa and Zimbabwe, that they're planning to caucus to postpone the elections. Why? Because there's a pandemic. Okay, granted. And, and then, because there's a pandemic, you cannot campaign because there's social distancing. And because there's a pandemic, we have to postpone and give the presidents who are in power right now another term of office. That leads us to number three. Are there governance and judiciary issues that are surrounding the coronavirus? Right now, it will be legislated that if you are found in a public place without a mask on, you will be arrested. You cannot travel without, without being vaccinated. I was trying to take my daughter to Swaziland the other day. You cannot cross the border if you don't have a vaccine certificate. How long is this vaccine certificate? It lasts for two weeks. And then, after two weeks, it expires. How much is the test itself? It's 1,200 to get the corona test. 1,200 expiring in two weeks. And you must get another test, and another test, and another test. And then you wonder, this judicial system, which will spill over into home affairs, spill over into public spaces, it has already affected the churches, for example, 
it has affected some of us who are in public speaking and earning our income from public speaking. Our income has been cut to zero. I can no longer call people together. I can no longer talk to anything. I can no longer make money from the public space. So the judicial system is actually legislated that you cannot meet for more than 50, 60 people depending on the capacity of the room and the requirements of those meetings must meet the judiciary. So there is, there is a legislative uh, impact of the corona on where we are coming from. So there's economics, which we need to be aware of. Secondly, the politics, which we are still struggling with, whether we are dealing with local politics, regional politics, continental politics, or we are now dealing with international politics in the glove of the pandemic itself. With that politics itself, how does the politics spill itself over into the judiciary system, which then governs the politics, quote-unquote, and governs the businesses at the bottom? Other businesses have been closed, totally, because they are not within the first or second tier of work from where the government and from where the judiciary wants them to operate from. And all this is stemming from this coronavirus pandemic that we have. So deal with the politics, deal with the, the, the business, deal with the politics, deal with the legislator. And I think number four is quite critical because number four speaks of propaganda, speaks of media, speaks of education. How, what is the quality of education? What is the quality of entertainment? What is the quality of information? How do you control the perception of the people to the pandemic which is now here to respond to the politics that is now at play and be able to deal and adjust their businesses so that they can respond correctly to the legislation legislation of the country, legislature of the country. So in the four tiers that we are looking at, for example, you may be thinking you're talking to a person but the question is, at what level are you talking to the person? And as countries, the question is, how are we responding to the pandemic? Are we responding economically? Are we responding politically? Are we responding legally? Are we responding media-wise? Here we are, some of us, just making noise on media. This is propaganda, because this has to do with managing the perception of the greater people and audiences that are out there. But this information, again, is being managed. You cannot say anything and everything that you want to say when you want to say it because what you are saying, number one, it is not conducive for the business. Number two, it is not politically correct. You always hear those words. It's not politically correct to say that. Number three, it is legally wrong. Human rights issues will not allow you to express yourself in that light. And finally, media sanctions and rules that governs what goes out for the people to listen and what must not be heard by the people. So the system is actually under a total siege and a total management. What kind of management? What type of thoughts do they want us to have? That's media for you. Now when you look at this system that we're now living in, which has given so much power, so much latitude to the politicians, so much power, so much latitude to the pharmaceuticals, so much power to the army, so much power to the police, so much power to the pharmaceutical companies, so much power to the governments. The question is, how do you as people begin to respond and maximize on your human rights to respond to a system that has four concrete layers that seem impenetrable? Business-wise, you don't have money, therefore you can't talk. Political-wise, you don't have influence. You can't talk. Legally-wise, there's enough laws that can manage you and keep you out of track. Media-wise, you cannot say that on public media. Therefore, the information that the people would solemnly need out there, the question is, how do we even break through these concrete walls to begin to say, I have freedom for myself. Those that want to vaccinate can vaccinate. It is their freedom of choice. Those that don't want to vaccinate, do they have a choice whether to or not to? Or the pandemic has now given the government power over human rights so that when I have made my decision, my decision can be overridden by the government. So right now, if you are inf infected with corona and you go to a hospital, you lose all your rights because it's a pandemic. Doctors take over. They take you, put you in the ICUs, 
pump you with gases and oxygens, give you injections and etc. and manage you until you recover or until you pass away or until you stay there for other complications that we don't know. Therefore, a human being by himself, you no longer have power over yourself as to what you want to do with yourself. Because for the sake of the greater good, the man who is infected must be put on quarantine using government instruments so that he does not affect others, even those who are within their family circles. You're on quarantine. Now you can no longer even bury people because you're afraid that people will contract this disease. So I want you to start thinking on these things. How does the corona pandemic affect your freedom of choice? How does it affect your rights? Do you still have power to choose what you want to do and what you don't want to do? If you are not sick, can you take medication for what you are not sick with? Or now the government will compel you to be vaccinated or compel you or persuade you or beg you or ask you or force you to go through the process. These are the questions that you need to start asking for. And I said it one time, a brother of mine was not happy with my video, where I said, yes, trials have been going on here as early as 2009 and 2002, thereabouts. Other countries were already advanced. They've come up with variations of these vaccines for this pandemic and this, which was still in the background. Initially, when Corona started, and we say this bacteria, this virus has been here prior, people are saying, no, 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 it's a new virus, it's a new virus. And they told us it's a new pandemic. All of a sudden, vaccines have been developed as early as 2002. There, patterns of these vaccines are already in houses, in pharmaceutical houses. So you begin to ask yourself, we are ignorant. And when the pharmaceutical businesses and the politicians and the lawyers are sitting around to coin themselves around this pandemic, how do we as Africa begin to respond economically? How do we respond as Africa politically? How do we respond judiciary? Or legally, ultimately, how do we respond in terms of education and propaganda? Is it possible that through this coronavirus, a new business model will come out? Is it possible that through the coronavirus, a new political system will manifest itself? Is it possible that through coronavirus, a new judiciary system will manifest itself? Is it possible that through coronavirus, a new media and propaganda machinery will be put into place. And when these things are all put into place, what is the objective? What is the ultimate goal for these systems that I have mentioned as they respond to the corona pandemic? The power is not with the government. The power is not with the business people. The power is not with the lawyers. The power is not with the media people. The power is with the people. The people, the people, sovereignty, self-reliance, the power is with the people, self-actualization, power is the people, what do the people want? Now we hear, they are buying vaccinations, vaccines, and distributing them into the people. Well done. Now you have vaccinated me, I'm alive. What am I going to eat? How am I going to live? Because the businesses have been destroyed. So slowly but surely, we like it or not, we will be there standing in front of the government begging for money to survive. For the middle class is slowly sinking into the poor class. And a few of the middle class who have got deals with businesses that are running are migrating very fast to become super rich. When the middle class is not there, then finally we're back to ground one, where the rich get richer and the poor ones make children. These are the things we need to be thinking about. When we take government people into power, the question is how much power do we give them to manage us as common people who are on the ground? 
Do these business people have an interest in the people? The last time we saw them, it was during elections. And we have never seen them again. The last time we saw them, they were buying posh cars and drinking Moet wines in Senten. We never saw them again. The last time we saw them, they were celebrating anniversaries of their parties. We never saw them again. When they are sitting in their business circles, what do they call us? They call us the poorest of the poor. They call us povo, common people. They call us the indigent. An inconvenience to the business budget and expenses. The question is, how do we respond as people to these pandemics? We told you at the beginning of this pandemic, start getting healthy, be healthy, keep your immune strong, eat well, drink well, reduce Coca-Cola, reduce Fanta, reduce Sprites, reduce all these sugary things. Start drinking water with, with lemons and start eating vegetables, gingers and garlics and etc. Boom, you walk up to a shop right now to buy ginger. Small little bag of ginger like this has shot through the roof. Garlic, you cannot find it on the shelves. The same business model of managing the things that make people healthy are disappearing from the shelves. Instead of building a healthy society, you are building a society that is fully dependent on doctors' opinions and pharmaceutical businesses. And I'm sitting here in my own space and I watch this drama that after vaccinating us, after pumping us with the COVID vaccines and all of us are vaccinated, you have destroyed the businesses at the bottom. What are we going to do and how are we going to survive post-COVID? What is the politics of Africa going to look like? What are the businesses of Africa going to look like? What are the legislative frameworks and policies internationally that will begin to affect us? I heard the other day, is it Qantas? Qantas Airlines has now said, if you want to be on our flight, you must actually, you must actually be vaccinated. Beautiful as that is, how does that affect other airlines and the freedom of movement of people around the face of the earth? Ultimately, we are sitting here listening to propaganda, listening to information. What quality of information does the government, does the economists, does the politician want us to hear? What kind of perception are they creating amongst us as common people? And until we begin to think maybe in that direction, we are all going to be queuing like sheep going for slaughter. With those few words, I say, think on these things. We are here already. What does tomorrow hold for us? What is your business model? Adjust it. It may not survive post-corona. What are your political influences? Start putting politicians who have interests of the people at heart. What are the legislative frameworks that will affect your business? Start studying carefully and understand even the basic document of human rights. How are your rights going to be affected? Ultimately, think what quality of information are you loading into your mind? For the information that you have in your mind will affect the decisions that you'll be making going forward. I thank you.